Hi everybody, my name is Dr. Hilary Booth and I'm a naturopathic doctor and welcome to my video blog. Today I want to talk about weight loss. So I want to give you six tips for losing weight um, that probably you haven't heard before. These aren't so much your cut calories, stop eating type suggestions. These are um, more things that I find are roadblocks for people who are trying to lose weight and often have a difficult time or these are things that people are uh, doing wrong in their lives basically and um, they are wondering why they're gaining weight. So the first tip is to get enough sleep. Um, you need about seven to eight hours of sleep per night in order to maintain a healthy metabolism. So if you're getting uh, under six hours of sleep per night, you're gonna start to develop what's called insulin resistance. And this is a pre-diabetic condition actually, and um, insulin resistance affects the way that your body processes and stores fats and sugars. The other thing about not getting enough sleep is that a lot of times you won't have the uh, energy to go to the gym the next day, which obviously is going to be a factor in weight loss. Um, but the third thing is that often when we don't have enough sleep, you start to crave more carbs. So you may have noticed on those mornings when you wake up and you haven't had a good night's sleep, you crave a big carby breakfast, a bagel or something like that, rather than going for something healthier. The second tip I have is to change the caloric density of what you're eating. So a lot of times um, you're eating foods that you think are healthy, but they actually are very low in nutrient value. And when this happens, your body craves that you eat more food because you're not meeting the nutrient requirements that your body needs. Um, but more of a bad thing doesn't necessarily, well, doesn't help you to uh, help your body to satiate those nutrient cravings. So you end up just eating more and more. Um, so an example of this is uh, a breakfast that is a healthy whole grain cereal um, with skim milk or another example would be a bowl of oatmeal with um, some cinnamon and an apple and some maple syrup all drizzled in. Both of those are, I mean granted they're pretty healthy breakfasts but they're very low comparatively in nutrient density so um, you're not getting enough protein with these breakfasts and you're um, probably not getting enough sources of good fats. You're probably also not getting enough of your vitamins. So a substitute for that would be to do a protein smoothie, um, a scoop of protein powder, some kale and some spinach for fiber and uh, for a little bit of iron and other different minerals and nutrients. Um, I put some coconut oil, either a teaspoon to a tablespoon of coconut oil in the smoothie. This fat just helps to satiate you for longer so it keeps your tummy feeling fuller for longer so you don't get that craving for a snack at 10 a.m. You can make it till lunch. Um, what else? Oh, and a little bit of fruit you can put into a smoothie. Again, this gives you some fiber, some nutrients, um, and also just makes it taste a little bit better. Um, the third thing, the third tip that I have for you is uh, to take your stress seriously. So if you are under high stress um, for a long period of time, your cortisol is going to increase. Your cortisol is a normal reaction to stress that we all get. Um, but if it's increased over a prolonged period of time, it's going to actually change the way your body deals with calories. It's going to selectively uh, store more fat and it's going to put it around the abdominal area. So when you see these sort of inner tube, muffin top, that kind of thing, um, or the, the big belly in the front, those are all indications that you have too much stress in your life, too much high cortisol levels over a long period of time. Your body's actually storing that as a protective measure. Um, your body sort of reverts, your body um, is designed to keep you alive, basically. So if you think back to prehistoric times, that kind of thing, um, if you were under stress, it's probably because there was a famine or a war. So your body would be storing the things that you're eating, um, storing it as fat, so that if you do get hit by a famine, war, bad weather, whatever it is, you're able to cope and live longer. So you can think of it as a protective mechanism that starts working against us when we live in a really fast-paced society where most of us are under a lot of stress for, long, for most of our lives. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is fixing your gut. So um, your gut has good bacteria and bad bacteria. Um, if you have taken a lot of antibiotics in your life as a child or as an adult, it will be killing the good bacteria and oftentimes what grows in its place is the bad bacteria. When you get this um, overgrowth of bad bacteria in your gut, it can affect your mood, your hormones, your energy, and your immune system. So if you're noticing any of these types of symptoms, um, that might be something to explore. You can also, um, you can also see that you'll get lots of sugar cravings if you have an overgrowth of yeast in your gut. 
Um, so if you do have uh, chronic yeast infections, sometimes migraines and headaches, skin conditions, um, chronic inflammation in your body, these things can be indications that you might have an overgrowth of yeast. And yeast feeds on sugar. So if you have yeast in your body, you're going to be craving sugar more often. So if you have strong sugar cravings, this might be a symptom of yeast. Um, the fifth thing I want to talk about is to do some lab testing. So um, we would test you for insulin resistance. As I mentioned before, it's a pre-diabetic condition, um, but you can treat it by changing your diet. And I would also do, oh, sorry. And the other thing about the insulin resistance is that it can cause um, cravings for high carb meals. And uh, you can also have insulin resistance if you have a family history of um, diabetes. And if you also, if you have PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. Um, so if anything is ringing a bell on that front, um, that's something to look into. Um, the other thing to test with lab testing is your thyroid. The reference range for a normal thyroid in the general medical community is quite wide. I typically find that patients who are sort of at the ends of that spectrum, especially having a higher TSH, um, are often experiencing symptoms such as weight gain, but um, it's medically not considered hypothyroidism at that point because the reference range is wide. I hope I'm not losing here. So um, what we typically see is either someone bridging on they're not quite hypothyroidism, it's like a subclinical condition, so we would help to treat the thyroid in that circumstance. Um, and that will help with the weight loss. As well is uh, if you don't do a full thyroid panel, oftentimes you can miss thyroid conditions. So uh, typically your MD's office, you're getting just a TSH. Um, that's gonna give you a good indication. It's a good starting point, absolutely. But if you're experiencing symptoms where you just can't lose weight, then you might have a th an undiagnosed hypothyroid condition and I would recommend doing a full thyroid panel to actually look at the active hormones in the system rather than just that one little marker. Um, so the final thing that I want to talk about, the final tip that I have for you is to stop over exercising. This is something I see a lot if you're trying to lose weight desperately and you're at the gym and you're pushing yourself as hard as you possibly can um, you, and you're not losing weight still and it's frustrating, but this is because you're over exercising. So as I spoke about before, your body is designed to, to survive. So if you're over exercising, your body will perceive this as a stress that you are in a war, running from something constantly, that you're having to walk really, really far to get your food or your water, whatever it is. Um, your body is perceiving over-exercising as having too much stress, and as a result, you'll have the same uh, result. It's gonna be storing more fats, and it's gonna prevent you from being able to lose weight. So again, just a rundown of all my six tips. First, get enough sleep. Second, change the caloric density and nutrient density of the foods that you're eating. Third, take your stress seriously. Number four, fix your gut flora. Number five, test for insulin resistance and your thyroid function. And number six is to stop over exercising. So I hope you've enjoyed my video blog today. Please let me know if you have any comments or questions. You can go to my website at www.hillarybooth.com and you can send me a message through my contact page there or you can feel free to send a message to my Facebook page. Please don't forget to like me on Facebook. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great week.